you know, it takes a lot to become a master gardener. You have to really study. You have to get the tests passed, and you have to do really well, right? That's right. And uh, Caroline is a master gardener, and she's in the studio right now to answer your gardening questions or just chat with you about gardening. You don't have to have a question. No. But we invite you to call either way. Caroline is here. Um, the number is 622 It's a full hour show. And call early. Give Caroline well, time to answer your questions. Sure. Let us hear. How are you doing? Going. I'm doing real good. Real good. Uh, yeah. If you got, you know, share in what your, your great harvests that are going on. Got to be going on in the garden now. I know I'm picking buckets full of cherry tomatoes and such. You're an inspiration for all it's, of us. You know, just just following you on Facebook is enough to oh, you, you make you want to plant things. Probably make people crazy. <laughs> No, but uh, no, it's yeah. Share, share your, you know, share your gardening triumphs, and and you know, don't always have to be a question. It can be, you know, hey, listen, I grew this. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let yeah. us know how you've done. I just finished. I picked, like I said, cherry tomatoes last week. I picked all my onions. Got those are all picked and are all set. And uh, sweet potatoes are started, and cherry tomatoes coming out my ear as cherry tomatoes will. <laughs> They are prolific producers. To you get your headphones yeah. on. I can't see the the head. They can't see the tomatoes coming out. If oh no! Yeah, they're, they're hold, held up in the <laughs> <laughs> held up in the headphones. But no, lots of lots and lots of cherry tomatoes. Eggplants are starting to produce, and peppers are starting. I don't know. My peppers have been slow this year, but does the uh, does nature have a way of knowing that the longest day of the year is almost here, and that means the days are going to start to get shorter? Does that change anything about the way things grow, or the uh, way or the way we we expect them to grow maybe um not really too much this time of year that uh what we usually have at this time of year would be just the temperatures Uh versus the day length because it's going to take such a long time before that day length really makes much difference in the day about the only real thing that we um have an issue with day length would be growing onions that there's actually oh, really? different day le- day length onions, short day, long day. Uh, some areas can grow like an intermediate that'll go sort of in between both of those. But, yeah, yeah. but we in the South, we here in Florida, we grow what they call short day onions, and that means just what it is that the days are short. Really? That they don't I didn't need know that. they don't need the length of time with daylight in order to produce the onion. But that's why we plant them. Uh, Usually, if you're starting your own seed, you're starting them end of September, first part of October. If you're going from transplants, um, November, December, you know, and and January, you could put some in successively Hmm. so that you would have a longer run because Florida onions don't store near as well as northern onions. Again, it's that day length and it's our temperatures and moisture. I'm curious if you're going to correct me on something. The onion, it seems to me, is unusual as a vegetable in that it's always with something else. You don't eat an onion like an apple. You you always put it with something else. The the sweet onion, the Vidalia type onion, or people from other states might under might know the Walla Walla. I think there's a Walla Walla onion. We Uh also have the St. Augustine sweet, the Vidalia. There's a few other that are really sweet onions that I know of people that. Just eat yes, them like an apple? Can't eat them like oh, that. Or, really? like a, or, or an onion sandwich. Do you know, we, we had an interesting story yesterday from Memorial Day. There was a New York Times article, I think it was 1938, and it was talking about this crazy new food trend out in California where they're starting to put cheese and tomatoes on hamburgers. It was unheard of. Wow. Well. Yeah. <laughs> can you imagine that? It just seems so weird. So, I mean, yeah, that's, that's so it's common like, now. Yeah, it's a norm. I think we have a phone call. Oh, good. I think I thought we had a phone call. Let me try it again. It disappeared and they came back. Here we go. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Morning, guys. Morning. Hey. Say, over the weekend, uh, when I went shopping, I went for my sweet corn, and I've seen, I've never seen this before, all white sweet corn. Oh, yeah. Have you by chance ever tried that? Is, is it a little more sweeter than oh, the Oh, that, that's, that's about the only thing I, I buy. I wasn't sure really? whether I like it or not. Oh, that's the only corn I buy is white corn. Why? Just I, I just corn. like it. I, I love I love the white corn. That's your silver queen corn is your white corn. Um, that was a lot of what used to be grown with the cell wood. I guess they also did grow the yellow corn. But, uh, oh, yeah, white corn is, is my favorite. It does have a pretty high sugar content. Um, yeah. So, But it, it does still work with butter and salt. <laughs> So yeah, it, right. it, uh, it, 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 it's it's true that if you, if you don't eat corn in with a day or two, that the sugar turns to starch and it's not yeah. as sweet. Is, is that the truth? Yeah, and actually, they can even start to get chewy. 
you know, because it oh. gets starchy is mm. what it is. The sugars are a starch. That's why corn's not really a vegetable. It's a it's a grain or a, or a uh, you know, you figure we make corn flakes. We don't make tomato flakes or green yeah. bean flakes. We make corn flakes. It's a grain. It's more of a cereal huh. and a starch than an actual vegetable. So those sugars all become starches. And, and yeah, tomato sometimes flakes you'll might find be good. Them, Sometimes you'll find a, you know, that sometimes you get some, some corn that might, might have been a little old or you ha- had it for a little too long. And it's, and it's chewy once it's cooked. And you kind of, ew, it's not very, not very palatable. I usually go for the uh, for the buy corn, you know, the, the mixed yellow and okay, the white. Okay, yeah, the candy corn. Yeah, yeah, I call it candy corn. Candy uh, corn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, the corn was very good. I would imagine it's probably pretty close to being local corn now, huh? It should be. It, yeah, it should be this time of year with, with us here. I, I can't imagine, you know, other states having corn ready yet yeah. you know on this time especially this this spring was actually fairly fairly cold in certain areas that yeah. uh you know L- that they're last, growing uh, last week larry mentioned uh that that zellwood corn festival hasn't been around out for a couple of years right so i i, I don't know what happened there it's a shame it was uh, we went there once and had a good time but uh, for whatever reason i don't know they don't have it anymore and there's well there's i guess other festivals that have been around that have you know maybe you know sometimes those festivals actually are very expensive to put together yeah and right. and time consuming and if you have manpower cuts or the economy wasn't you know booming the way it was that you had low turnout um maybe some of your regular vendors uh had you know because of the economy no longer existed at, in order to put out a good you know a good event and you figure something like a corn festival is definitely going to be from local uh people it's not going to be stuff that's going to grow you know attract vendors from out of state so much as another type of another type of uh event so when you're talking fresh produce and things it just uh, probably just happened as a matter of it it just didn't fit in within the budgets of the community and um you know when when it came to turnout and and profit yeah. See, I was going to say too. It's hard to believe that in three weeks the days are going to start to get shorter. Yeah, that's yeah. I don't. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll stick with I'll keep with what we've got right now. I'm enjoying yeah. those long days that we have. Yeah, you have to enjoy yourself because time is going by. Before you know it, you'll be dead. I always say. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Before you know it. Before you know it. That's it. <laughs> Oh, okay, thank you. Have a good day. You, you too. I don't even you know too. if you do know it. I wonder if you no. really know that. No, who knows? Yeah. Well, <laughs> only the good Lord knows how long you'll be here. Yeah. But that's, yeah. The, with, long, the long days, though. The birds are up now when I'm up. So I can hear them outside singing and going, oh, really? hello. You yeah. guys are up way too early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the, um, I actually got to sleep in yesterday because I was off, off. I was off all day. I had no, no, I just had fun day um but yeah i heard the birds in the did you go anywhere before I was go- yeah i went to a party and out, out of town no it okay. was in town, in, yeah, town. in town just you know lots just, of fun just had fun yeah hung out hung out with some good friends listen oh. to some good music we're at a break already oh, wow much. there are 45 more minutes left in this program that's what i love about this program it's a great program and i love the, the length uh if you have a question, you just want to chat with Caroline Baldwin, that's what we want you to do is call in. The number is 622-9622. We'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Tuesday, sunshine mixing with clouds with a thunderstorm in spots mainly during the afternoon hours, the high 80 to 92. And for Tuesday night, a shower or thunderstorm early, and partly cloudy later tonight, low 68 to 72. For Wednesday, sunshine and some clouds with an afternoon thunderstorm, the high 89 to 93. And Thursday, sun and some clouds, an afternoon thunderstorm, high 89 to 93. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Joe Lundberg. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. Most planes get a set of freshly washed blankets and pillows for the first flight of the day. After that, they're folded up, they're reused. Babies consistently cried less when their father was close by compared to when dad was absent, and that response was observed even in the delivery room. Try to stick to your usual sleep and wake times as much as possible, even on the weekends. Your waistline and your heart are going to thank you. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. 
Cookies, 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 cookies. We go cookie eating cookies. When you want something special and fun for any occasion, get cookies. King Cookie in the Paddock Mall in Ocala will make a delicious, fun-filled delight just for you. So next time you're in the mall, stop by King Cookie or call 352-237-2557. KingCookieOcala.com. Customized cookies, cakes, and more. King Cookie. Eating cookies, eating cookies. We're so happy eating cookies. Cookies! 82 degrees, 82 degrees. Temperatures climbing today to 93, so it's yeah. going to be a, a summer day, even though it's not summer yet. Caroline Baldwin is here, and Caroline, you have a caller waiting Great. patiently on hold. Good morning. Thank you for waiting. You're on with Caroline. Great. Good morning, Caroline. Morning. Um, I have a zoysia grass in my lawn, and it's looked really ugly for a couple of years. It mm-hmm. really has never <laughs> just been dis- difficult so at any rate i had a man come and desatch it and okay. then top dress it uh-huh and uh he said keep it keep it watered and so i'm following his directions on the watering uh, but i'm wondering if i went out and got some zoysia grass seed and kind of sprinkled it over the top dressing would that kind of uh fill in some of the spots that are looking very very sparse the only difference, because you probably have what is uh, called empire zoysia. I mean, you you may not know, know but that's sure. that's no. that's the one that's recommended for Central Florida. That's generally the one if you go looking for zoysia sod that you're going to find for our area. The only issue with the grass seed is that it's not empire zoysia. So ah. to just fill in small patches. I wouldn't recommend it because I'm not sure if it would match. But if you took and ran the seed, if you ran the seed across the whole yard, you know, just at like a top, like a top dress of that across the whole lawn, then it would at least mix through and give a more uniformity. Okay. Okay. Actually, if if it had just come up green, I almost don't at this point care whether or not, but. Uh, I will uh, try to figure out what kind of uh, original soys that we had anyway. Right. But well, but like, help. but like I said, if you want to, you know, instead of just scattering a little bit in the thin areas, is get a bag of it and and spread the whole the whole lawn, and the whole that lawn. way, wherever it came, you know, as it comes up, it will make more of a blend. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. You're welcome. Yeah. Have a good day. Good day. Thank you. Yeah. And that's, you know, when you're trying to do that, I know a lot of people now that we're getting ready to start to come into rain, it's warm enough, uh, grass seed will germinate quickly, um, that there's one, one, there's no such thing as seed for St. Augustine. So if you have a bad area in that section of your lawn, it would be first find out why. Was it an insect issue? Was it a fungal issue? And take care of that problem. Um if you're taking when you're taking care of that problem after you think you've got that taken care of rake out that bad stuff you know if you if you have to pay somebody to come in and and rake it out or power rake it um power rake they, it. yeah they've got one that'll actually lift it all up and really? it, does, it does it does quite a bit of damage to the lawn but it recovers from it it's you know you hmm. just got to be careful with it um and and top dress across them usually a lot of times they'll recommend sand and some people will say topsoil to me topsoil is for filling a hole um because you could bring in weed seed you know with it with topsoil they're not screened for weed seed so i would stay away from topsoil myself and use go go to either the like something like the black cow or out on the market is also a um, a soil type thing called lawn soil and it's been screened. It tells you that oh, it okay. is weed-free. And so you can put that. And you're only putting uh, an eighth of an inch. So you're not covering the grass. You're just sort of putting something in. And these are going to offer some nutrition uh, it, across the whole lawn without actually fertilizing it. It just kind of gives it that hmm. little extra bump of nutrition that's that's lacking that's going to encourage that grass to fill in those bad spots again um the sand of course it lacks anything it's just covering keeping moisture in. and then give it a good watering um you know check make sure your sprinklers when they are when you do need them to come on are watering that three quarters of an inch don't just have them come on for 20 minutes because that's what they set it for um inspect them run them on your day to run sprinklers, turn them on. When, you know, get up early and and run them while you can see them, uh, and see what's going on. How much is putting out, and make sure that all the heads are working. 
you know, nothing worse than you keep thinking you've got a bad area when it's actually just a sprinkler head's plugged up. Wow, yeah, that could be you know, a simple Is it fix. popping up all the yeah. way or something? So, yeah, check it, check it out and make sure you're doing it. You have a phone call? Just okay, a real quick right. mention, yeah. I want to mention the number, 622-9622. And also, if you've never called the show, I want you to know that nobody says hello. You'll hear the phone answer. You'll hear Carol Ann talking. Uh, and when she takes a breath or finishes yeah. the answer for the last question, then uh, we'll go to your call. And that's exactly what happened to this call. <laughs> they had to wait. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you for waiting, by the way. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I live in an area where there's a lot of sand. Okay. And I'm trying to figure out, uh, I have some areas that need to have grass seed put on it. Okay. So there are certain type grass seed. I'm not from this area. And okay. I'm, I'm really scratching my head trying to figure out how to get grass grow on this sand. I'm having a really hard time. I bought some uh, seeds from uh, Lowe's, but uh, it come up and then it just died right back out again it was probably a rye seed might have been what you what you got which rye does fine in the winter time but not you know once it starts getting hot it dies off <clears throat> um you say you say it's got a lot of sand is it getting full sun uh i got some oak trees around but even where there's full sun i don't have uh, a whole lot of grass a whole lot of uh, grass. My neighbors two doors down from me they got a beautiful yard Okay, but, okay. Uh, me, I just, <laughs> I have no idea what's going on with it. Right, right. You may need to bring in um, some compost or, or manure or whatever in order to give some of that, that soil a little bit of a body to it. And then I would just go with, like, Bahia. Why, you know, Bahia is a, a tough... Uh, it's like a pasture grass, but it can handle our drought conditions. It can handle our winter time. Um, it's generally not a whole lot of maintenance to it. But if it's, is, are you like that white, white sand, almost like sugar sand, or is yes, it just okay? Yeah, that's going to be tough to grow in, no matter, no matter what. Your your neighbors may have brought in a lot of fill. Um, and and got that down and then went ahead and sodded or uh or you know had sod laid which once you can do that and you can get that established you'll you know you would have a nice lawn but that can get to be an expensive proposition uh you might think of just bringing some fill in um you know some nutritional fill and the the uh Soil places have different grades. You know, it's either builder's fill or something that you're looking to improve a garden area or lawn area um, and get a load of that, spread that out. And then, like I said, some bahia seeds, some Argentine bahia would probably be a good uh, grass for you. I have uh, went to uh, one of the shops here in town and bought some bags of uh, dirt and black cow mm -hmm. and spread that around and put the seeds in it. But it uh, seems like after uh, not a heavy rain, but a nice rain, the uh, the dirt just disappears into the sand. Yeah, but it's still it's it's still there. It hasn't you know. I mean, it's not sitting going to sit there right on top. But that's why I say get it get it in there. Uh, you know, enough of it. Get the seed going. Get that seed germinating. This time of year, the seeds should germinate rather quickly. Um, in the cooler season, Bahia, Bahia can take up to 28 days to germinate, but um, with the warmer weather, getting water on it, because um, you, you do have to water it. That's your biggest thing is that you got to water that seed, get that seed up and germinating, and um, it, it takes a few weeks to get it to where you can then turn your sprinklers back down to uh, fewer applications of water in a week. But um, when you're trying to get seed established, you might even, some people use straw across it once they put the seed down to keep birds out of it, keep it from washing away if we were to get a heavy rain. But yeah, whatever you're putting down, it's still that, some of that soil is still staying there. You just got to try to get that seed up and growing quickly. All right. I thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, with you too. With growing grass seed, it, it is one of those things that people just think they can toss it toss right, it out right, there right. And, and get it. And that, well, I, I turn the sprinkler on, but you still got it. You got to turn that sprinkler on like every day, maybe even twice a day. And it may not, it's not as much water as as, as you think just to, to keep that moist. Some people do use, like I said, some straw across there just to keep that moisture down keep the birds out uh -huh. of it uh i mean keep the moisture up the birds out 
and keep from heavy rains from eroding or taking some of that seed and washing it away before it gets a chance to, to come up and grow. You know, the, the one thing that you hear all the time from people who are new to the area is how do you grow anything in sand? Oh, yeah. You hear that all the time. And, and there are some sandy areas where it is t- the matter of you just don't see any grass growing. The, uh, t- the, okay, I think I've asked you this before, but is the sand more sandy, I guess for lack of a better way to ask this question, in the newer developments? Like, and the reason I ask this is because I lived in Rainbow Lakes Estates. Right. It was a new development. Right. Very sandy. I lived in Bellevue in a house that had probably been there 50 years, and, right. and it wasn't that sandy, really. Probably because at that point, you know, in older in older established areas where there's been lawns mowed and yeah. leaves have dropped down, that all that all builds the soil. Yeah, if yeah. you've got the, the pasture that they plowed up and, and planted little houses throughout, all you had was pasture uh-huh, grass uh-huh. there. And then they've t- come in and brought in fill dirt. And you know, builders sand, and and it does lack any body, anything like that. But that's why usually when I'm telling people if they're gonna, people always ask, what can I put in the hole when I plant the tree? I said, unless you're going to amend the whole area, don't waste your money, because if you plant that tree or shrub properly, in three months down the line, those roots are no longer in that little hole that you dug yeah right there are several feet out so, so you're wasting you, money right so but if you're going to do a bed or if you're going to plant the tree get you the bag of, of garden soil or or black cow or or you know whatever you like break that open rake it into the just rake it over to the area and as you dig your hole it will mix and as you hmm. water as the rain happens and things like that that nutrition is out there past where that hole was and it's amending that soil and making that soil hold more water hold more nutrient and giving that you know those plants and i mean it's not something you're going to do every year um because you don't want to eventually bury your plant but i mean you could you know for the first few years probably throw a couple bags in to a planting area and you'll see how much uh, you know how much better that your plants can be sometimes just revitalizing some older plants that are you know maybe struggling a little bit um these are normally things i would do in about february or march um only because of it's hot outside <laughs> You know, this time of year, unless yeah, you're getting yeah. out real early in order to rake out that old mulch and clean out, and you've already all the dead stuff, you know, you hopefully by now have already cleaned out. Um, those are good spring, almost like a spring cleaning job in the in the landscape. But adding some soil to try to get your you know your grass to grow, uh, to new planting beds because you're putting in more perennials or, or some shrubs in. Go ahead, you know, amend the area, not the hole. And that way, you get a better, you know, better value out of your, out of your dollar. Sounds like good advice. We've got about a minute left before the bottom of the hour. But good news, we've got a full half hour left of in the garden with Carol Ann, and we'd love to hear your calls. I think the last caller just uh, opened up a whole topic we hadn't really discussed before, right. or not at least not in a while. Yeah, it's been a little while. Not in a while. Uh, so we'll take a little break and be right back with Carol Ann after the news and a few commercials. And remember, the number is six two two nine six two two. And if you're a new caller. Just know this, that there is no call, there are no call screeners here. There's nobody who says, hello, hang on. Uh, unless you call during the break, then it'll be me. Uh, but otherwise, what I do is uh, I simply push the button and, and, and uh, allow Carol Ann to get whatever she's saying out. And when she takes a break, then I will go, good morning, you're on the air with Carol Ann. So, <laughs> so if you call in, just so you know that that's the, the protocol of the show. We'll take a little break and be right back. News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. The fight for control of a key Iraqi city continues. Iraqi forces are pushing their way into the center of Fallujah and have repelled a four-hour attack by ISIS in the southern part of the city. The Islamic insurgents started the attack at dawn. Fox Radio's Jessica Gallagher. The Taliban in Afghanistan, meanwhile, kill nine and abduct dozens in an attack on buses in the north. And the Golden State Warriors heading back to the NBA Finals after a dramatic comeback. The game on TNT Sports, Stephen Curry hitting seven three-pointers, scoring 36 points to help advance his team to the finals. For us to overcome the early deficit and claw our way back in the way that we did it, 
with everybody having an impact. It was just a, uh, a very cool moment to enjoy. The Warriors rallied from a 3-1 and one series deficit. Fox Radio's Rich Jennison. Fox News. We report. You decide. Psst. Hey, it's me. Your car. No, it's not the voice of your car phone or your GPS that gives you driving directions. I'm sorry to interrupt your tunes, but we need to talk. Take a look around. I'm not the new car I used to be. The season's dirt and mud really did a number on my carpet here. And that iced coffee you spilled, hoo-hoo, that didn't help. And with the rain showers and all, I know it's going to be a real mud bath in here. So do me a favor and get a set of WeatherTech floor liners. Got it? Now, how about a wash in detail? What do you say? WeatherTech floor liners and cargo liners keep your vehicle's carpet safe from spills and messes. Made of the highest quality materials and laser measured, WeatherTech floor liners are specifically designed for your vehicle. And they're made in America. If it could talk, your vehicle would thank you. Order yours today at weathertech.com or call 1-800-CARMATS. WeatherTech. Complete protection. Completely American made. Career Source Citrus Levy Marion brings together business and community partners, economic development leaders, and educational providers to connect employers with qualified, skilled talent, and job seekers with employment and career development opportunities. Tune in the first and third Wednesday of each month at 9.30 a.m. to Career Source Citrus Levy Marion and learn how they can help you. Next time you're thinking about beating the train, think again. It takes a typical freight train traveling 50 miles an hour, one and a half miles to stop. That's nearly 18 football fields. Don't try to beat the train. Florida's roads can be highways or dieways. The choice is yours. A message from Operation Lifesaver. This message also brought to you by your friends here at WOCA Talk 1370. Hey Ocala, this is Kelly Hart, executive editor of Ocala Magazine. Did you know last year Ocala Magazine won more awards and excellence than any other publication in Florida? And this year, Ocala Magazine was named best consumer magazine in the state. Now you can join me every Friday at 10 a.m. on Ocala Magazine Radio, where we bring the pages of Ocala Magazine to life, right here on The Source. Ocala Magazine thanks you for making us number one. And remember, there is only one Ocala Magazine. Hey, I'm Gary. And I'm Eric. Did you know that Red Eye Radio is on WOCA, The Source, every night from 2 to 6 a.m., and it's live. That's right. No tape shows here. We know that the news doesn't sleep. And neither do we. So we're here with you live from 2 till 6 a.m. every weekday. Call us, 866-90-RED-EYE. So join me, Gary McNamara, and me, Eric Harley, every weeknight to discuss the latest in news and entertainment right here on WOCA, The Source. Hi, I'm Leah Caruso with Strive Rehabilitation, inviting you to join me Thursday at 11 a.m. for Health Matters. Ocala Health and Strive have teamed up to bring you the latest information on good health services available to you right here at home. This vital information will help you make informed decisions about your health. So don't forget to join me here at 11 a.m. Thursday. It's news you can use from Ocala Health, Strive, and your friends here at WOCA. When it really counts, depend on the source for the latest weather updates, keeping you ahead of the storm. 96.3 FM, 1370 AM, The Source. Hi, I'm Fran Darkington. When I need news, I pass the rest in tune to the source. W-O-C-A. All right, 25 minutes before 10 o'clock. It is 79 degrees. Wasn't it 82 just a little while ago? It, went, it, was, it so. dropped a little bit. And uh, 50% chance of rain today. Um, it's just going to be afternoon rain, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's, what it, we, that's, that's what we get. I mean, we are coming into the summer rainy season. Yeah. Um, Sunday, I was down Wearsdale area, and it rained like all get out for a short while. Uh, my daughter, who's couple miles south of me it, she got light rain and it barely rained at my it did not rain at my house so it was that's the way it's, it's welcome to florida welcome right? to florida <laughs> yep you never know we have a phone call good morning thank you for calling you're on there with carol ann 
Morning, Carol Ann. Morning. Morning, Larry. Morning. Hey. Um, that gentleman who called about is Sandy Yard. He should call Ocala Organics. Okay. They're at 591-0603, and he can get a full load, and it's pretty cheap, delivered free of charge if he's within 14 miles of Lamhone Farm. Okay. He can spread that and till that into his soil, and that'll help him. Oh, really? yeah, wow. sure would, yeah. Wow. That's the cheapest way to go. I use a lot of his product. Great, great. Wow. Never heard of that before. Yeah. And and I just looked it up. Lamb Home is L-A-M-B-H-O-L-M. I just found it That's online. That's right. You're pretty yeah. sharp, Larry. Oh, he's I got he's Google. quick. I got Google. <laughs> 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 it's very good stuff. It's uh, weed-free. Good. It's rich, and it's black, and it's it's pretty tough stuff. And you till that in with any sandy soil, it's great. Great. That's that's great. So wow. that's there's there's a way there's one one answer and reasonably priced. Yeah, it is. It's like twenty bucks a yard. Oh, that is if you yeah. Get the bigger lot, it's even cheaper, and they deliver it free within fourteen miles. Okay. Wow. And where are they? Where is Lamhole? It's uh, out on three twenty nine um, down to two hundred somewhere around there hmm. Reddick mm-hmm. area okay oh, okay, okay. Now okay. I know. so yeah everything so else was I was drawing a blank right. Red, Reddick area, <laughs> Reddick area yeah. Yeah. yeah they delivered to the nursery here free and as I say 14 miles and you've got it there you go oh, there you go okay sounds good hey okay. well hope that hope that helps for him yeah, so do I. Good All advice. Right, thanks, Dave. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, now I know Bye. who that is. Okay, yeah, yeah Dave Taylor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you could, we should recommend people go there too. They've got a lot of green. Yeah, they've got they've got still got part of the nursery going, and then you pick stuff. And yeah, yeah. So one thing I always remember about going to Dave's place was the uh, well, in addition to the work he did in South Africa, was right. the the greenhouse, and you were working yeah. there at the time, yeah, right? I did. Yeah, yeah. And and the greenhouse is used for mostly for overwintering, okay. but okay. but starting some of their starting some of their plants and. Uh, he had his orchids in there and oh, things okay. like that. But in the winter time, you got all these little young plants that need to be protected, or or you know, in the springtime, you're starting new starts and things like that. It gave, so it gave it a nice. Uh, so a lot of people don't you know. know about the the little nurseries like Dave. Yeah, the little has. mom and pop places, yeah, yeah. right? Everybody. I mean, everybody it's not little. Said, it's it's well, rather large, it's, right? It, it it yeah, their place is rather big, but they they back down quite a bit oh, on really? what they're doing. Um, but a lot of you know, I mean, the the mom and pop places are the are the small you know retail markets and and the big box stores have uh, you know really they have put a hurting on those ones. But if you're really looking for something unique, something unusual, something think, thinking outside of the box store, uh-huh. you go find a an independent uh, nursery or garden center. I mean, even some of your independents pick up from some of the bigger suppliers so you know your 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 small mom and pop nurseries and and places like that are the ones that you're going to find the the more unique um plants and and things like that and get some great information great gardening knowledge comes out of those places because they are the hands-on people do you benefit when your neighbor amends the the lawn like if i don't do anything but my neighbor puts fertilizer down and everything do i benefit from that if it rains real hard the next day <laughs> you sure do if you're down slope from them yeah uh um, well, that's the only way it doesn't but it, well you know some of it may you may find the edges of your own uh doing better but if his soil's uh good it's holding moisture in the area um you know, it, it's it's hard to say if his if his plants are growing healthy, it could be that you you know that actually yours would be more affected by insect pests or things like that because his his can withstand it better. That where where if you don't do anything, and we hear that as a complaint a lot, is my neighbor just doesn't treat for this pest or oh, that no, pest or oh, this no. disease, right, right, right. and they mow their grass and they blow their weeds into my yard and and. 
um, yeah. it's it's one of those kind of things of keep your weeds on your own lawn uh, <laughs> but you know take take a little time take a little care and if your neighbor you know if you if you have the issue you see that your neighbor's not doing it is it you know it might be one of those things is it possible that they're they're not capable of going out there and doing it might even be the thing of maybe they don't really know that there's an issue or that there is something that they should do so if you're a good neighbor if you've got you know an um you know, any kind of relationship with the neighbor that's on a positive side might be the kind of thing <laughs> of getting together and saying, hey, listen, you yeah, know, right. um, I got a spreader if you need a spreader to, to put your fertilizer down, you know, so that you don't have to go to the expense of purchasing a spreader. Yeah, if yeah. you get yourself a bag of fertilizer here, I'll put it out for you uh, kind of thing that, you know, it might be a might be a benefit or guess what so and so store has this has this on sale do you want some too we can go in halvesies and both save some money so it might be the kind you know that, that helps to keep the weeds down you know or might to which i would say eh, i'm okay yeah and and many people would yeah i'm all right yeah, yeah, i'm right. Yeah. gonna have hot dogs tonight you, yeah. you want some hot dogs we'll go halves yeah <laughs> 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 well, hey, yo, if I'm cooking hot dogs, you bring in beer? Yeah. <laughs> it sometimes that works. But not yeah, you know, not always. It might be just as a thought, you know, that if you something if you've got a relationship with your neighbor and you're it is one of those things that their their weeds are getting out of the yard, uh you might be asking the neighbor, "Hey, do you mind if I treat for your weeds? If you don't mind going to that expense have you ever on done your that? own i i haven't but i don't have a neighbor close enough to worry about <laughs> you have such a lush area well, and it, naturally it's just, lush. it's just all it's woods it's you know just yeah. a very wooded yeah. wooded area and so it's not one of those things so you don't have do. sand problems at all right I mean, I have or sandy, I have sandy really? soil under there, but really? it's um, it doesn't seem like well, it would be. Well, that's because that's because Florida has sandy soil yeah, naturally. I, guess so. I mean, it has built up with its own leaf litters and the leaf molds mm. and things like that, which benefit the trees that are growing there. But when you start to dig, um, it's still when you feel that soil, it doesn't have a whole lot of water holding capabilities. When it rains hard, we get the the immediate puddle. As soon as it stops, it's gone. It has perk through uh there's no clay up near the surface so it's not you know it doesn't hold much water we're up against another break believe it or not uh and I, i'm just doing this a little bit early so i can yeah. talk about this right. because we've got a gift certificate here worth 20 dollars for bob wine's community gardens and nursery right. and i was actually reminded of this by a post on facebook where they tagged WOCA. so i said oh i wonder what they're saying maybe they're talking about you right um, but what they did is they posted their their flyer Ah. So I'm going to tell you some of the things on their flyer. They have African iris white, six for twenty four ninety nine. Nice. That sounds like a good price. Yeah. Citrus trees, Myers lemon, Persian lime, twenty nine ninety nine. Pretty good. That's a good price. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, blooming hanging baskets, eight inches, starting at six ninety nine. That's, that's a good one. That's all right. Yeah. Uh, so Bob Wines Community Gardens and Nursery, and, and the last one I'll tell you about Juniper Blue Pacific. What is that? It's a ground cover. It's a ground cover. Ground cover Blue, six, blue Pacific. Six for twenty nine ninety nine. What's six? Or seven? Five bucks a piece. Okay. Yeah, that's so, not bad. So, so that that's in place of grass. You put that in place of grass instead of grass. That, that would be in some of those areas that might be hard to mow. Uh, oh, okay. You can put it, you know, okay. in a sunny area. Sometimes people have got, you've got shrubs planted and you just want something in front of them that's not grass. Um, and those, are, you know, they're hardy. They'll hold the weeds down. They will keep soil from eroding. Okay. They're just a tough plant. And again, there, Bob Wines is, is another one of those kind of mom and pop, small, independent nurseries slash garden center for them because they do sell other products they sell fertilizers and things like that but your gift certificate's only good for plants and it's twenty dollars and it's bucks. yours if you call me right now i don't have any question to ask you i just i want to make sure to do this before i forget right so twenty dollars is yours you got to be the first one that gets through six two two nine six two two and i'll just take a call at random actually because i want to make sure somebody gets it and we'll take a little break i'll take your call and get your information off the air and we'll be right back we've got 15 minutes left in the show 622-9622 if you want to call for the bob wine certificate or to ask carolina a question the weather is brought to you by myfwc.com safe boating is no accident on this tuesday sunshine mixing with clouds with a thunderstorm in spots mainly during the afternoon hours the high 80 to 92 and for Tuesday night, a shower or thunderstorm early and partly cloudy later tonight, low 68 to 72. 
For Wednesday, sunshine and some clouds with an afternoon thunderstorm, the high 89 to 93. And Thursday, sun and some clouds, an afternoon thunderstorm, high 89 to 93. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Joe Lundberg. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at pennflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. Hi, I'm Seth with AA Lock, Dock, and Security. Have you ever thought about the locks or security on your house or business? Have you ever wondered why the keys to your new car cost so much? Well, at AA Lock, Dock, and Security, we can help with securing your valuables. We can even replace those expensive transponder keys. We can give you the knowledge that no one else will. Call AA Lock, Dock, and Security at 867-1965. That's 867-1965. Hospice of Marion County has an urgent need for volunteers to share a conversation with someone, run errands, hold someone's hand. All you need is a willingness to help others. Our volunteers believe the blessings they receive far exceed the services they offer. Will you consider serving, caring, and making a difference? Call today, 873-7441. Hospice of Marion County, making more moments of life possible. Hi, this is Vanessa Lane Jennings with the Jennings Law Firm, located here in beautiful Ocala. Join me every single Friday at 1030 for Legal Lane. We'll be discussing various legal topics such as family law, criminal law, contracts, and much more. So this is your chance to call in with your legal questions and have them answered. That's every Friday, 1030, right here, WOCA The Source. Putting the local back into radio. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. W-O-C-A News. Variety. Information. Now. Keep your arms and legs on the inside at all times. W-O-C-A. AM 1370. 96.3. 96.3. We are the source. W-O-C-A. News. Talk, sports, and more. All right, the computer weatherman can't make his mind up. Now it's 82 degrees again, so we're up, oh. and, up, <laughs> up and up. Maybe we went through some shade right there. Maybe. That that might have been it. So what do you do with a, what do you do with a pest that's so cute you can't kill it? Like a bunny rabbit that's eating your, your vegetables. You don't want to kill the bunny rabbit, no, you right? Could, you could fence off your... your Just put a fence. Put, put a easy. fence. There's some repellents out there that at least work temporarily, you know, if... if you know, if not as a permanent, you know, shield against them, it might be enough to deter them to somewhere else, uh, your neighbor's garden, uh, just long enough to deter them to where the plant gets bigger, that it will not be palatable to, you know, the the pest, the, the rodent, whatever, rabbit, uh, squirrel, other creatures that like to tear up or eat plants. I mean, sometimes people have a problem with deer coming in now deer will eat your plants your roses and stuff right to the ground yeah and, uh, i, I, I you remember uh, doris who used to work here mm-hmm. Dor- doris lives she, in silver spring shores right, and had such a problem with her roses i, I think it was yeah that, and I, I could never figure out how the, uh, deer got out to silver spring shores are you, are you ready for another sure phone call? good morning you're on the air with carol ann hey good morning carol ann i got a quick question for oh, you okay my daughter and then i'm gonna hang up and listen while i finish my weeding okay yeah snails in the vegetable garden i don't know if she brought it in with the mulch but i mean totally devastating the garden every day she's out there picking every night she's done bear cans she's done de she's done eggshells any other suggestions i'll listen all right oh, wow. yeah the snail and here's another one yeah where did they all come but from they're not all cute. the snails no they're they're not cute. well you grow them big <laughs> enough you gotta escort go now <laughs> Uh, snails in the vegetable garden. The baits that are out there on the market now are safe to use in the vegetable garden around the plants, safe with our pets, pets as well as wildlife. Um, they're either an iron phosphate base or a sulfur-based one, so they they kind of break down into a fertilizer component when they you know when they break down. You do have to use them repeatedly. 
um, you know, with heavy, you know, it's something that you may have to put down a little bit every couple of, you know, every week or so in order to get some control on it. Um, the only thing, if it's if it's raised beds, they they have said using copper flashing, but that copper flashing has to touch the ground, you know, has to go into the ground a little bit as well as come up where you're where you're going because the copper and grounded with the earth and acts as a conductor with really? the slime of the so snail or slug to the, to them it is really? that it would keep them from being able to uh get up there but then again that's not necessarily something that's going to work especially if you have a, a large garden or it's not a raised bed um the boards you know p- scraping them off into the, into the soapy water um it's it's nice moist area and, and like you say, not sure where they may have come in from mulch. Um, yeah, they may have come in with the mulch. Um, it's hard to say. Some years, some years are just bad for snails. Um, whether or not it's that it was, you know, our winter wasn't as cold as it normally was, or not cold at the right time to not back knock back some of the eggs uh, production or anything like that. But yeah, I would I would probably get one of the the baits. I don't think there's any of them that are better than others. I know that most of them um, are the iron. You know the iron phosphate. I, I'm not sure if they took away the methyl dehyde, which was the chemical one that I mean it really worked. But you didn't want to use it in a vegetable garden, and you did not want to use it if you had pets uh-huh. because it was attractive to pets. They would eat it. They would become very sick. Um, so as far as I know, that's probably not available too much. I, I haven't seen it this mm-hmm. year uh, or last year. So you know the iron iron phosphate baits. And and just keep you just got to keep on it. It's it's tough. It's a tough. That's about all you can do. Wow. That, that and keep keep going after. Keep scouting for them, and and you won't find the what? dead ones. The methyl dehyde ones. You'd actually find the and the dead shells from the snails. Uh, with the iron phosphate type things, they go off and die. So you may not find that you know the satisfaction of seeing them dead. Right, right, right. But you, you'll see just a lesser um, you know concentration of them, and that's about the only way you can get rid of them is to you know is to or to lower the population for the next season is to lower the population now. Wow, is there a natural predator you can? Um, I birds will introduce? eat them. Oh, I mean, it's yeah. You know, oh, it, oh, really? So attract birds? Get put some bird yeah, seed I mean, out? Well, but you usually don't want birds too much in your garden either because either, huh? they can yeah they they can either be pecking your fruit as well as as uh their droppings and stuff you know or yeah, yeah, yeah. not nice to have on your produce either mm. so it's a it's kind of it's a tough one snails are tough but i would i would go with the bait and continue scraping them off doing the nightly scout put the board on the ground uh that way in the in the hot part of the day they'll go underneath there you can lift that up scrape them into your bucket of soapy water and get rid of them or scrape them off you guys got chickens scrape them off in the chicken house uh chickens eat snails yeah they'll eat them too yeah you know give them to them let them have them or let them have some of them see if they will go ahead and and munch on them and you know if they if they don't scrape them off in your bucket of soapy water you know and get rid of them (laughs) Not much you can do so for snails. It's tough. Yeah. Well, and I know they have they have chickens and, and other no, poultry. And okay. Now I I went to a home one time. I think I shared this with you. And they had six peahens. What are they call? Okay, guinea hens. Yeah, pea guinea hens. Yeah. Guinea, yeah, not yeah. peahens. Yeah, guinea hens. Yeah. And they were walking around pecking, and they yeah. said they they had this horrible flea problem. And when they got the guinea hens, yeah. that's what it was called. Yeah, they they the flea problem went away. They're yeah. they're literally out there eating them. Yeah, well they're they're big on yeah the guineas will eat ticks um, especially. Oh, maybe that's what it was. Yeah, there was it was probably ticks because fleas are kind of small, but they so, will eat the ticks. So they won't eat the. Uh, I don't know if they can get to the fleas. Yeah, you know, but I mean the, oh, the, 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 the snails, snails. They quite possibly would. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Some hmm. of your other ones. It's just having those go through your garden. I've seen some interesting. Um, <laughs> Uh, so the chickens won't eat them naturally. I mean, they, I mean, they they probably would, they but you don't necessarily want, want them in the garden. You don't necessarily want them in the garden because they scratch and everything else. Mm. And and as they get digging around, they can you know tear up your garden. So I I have seen some interesting ways of making little uh, chicken tunnels. 
so that the birds of prey don't come and get your chickens but it's like a tunnel that you can put down walkways and they can they can work in those certain areas really? and you can move this to different you know different really? parts of the garden Chicken or tunnels. even or even um uh, if it is a matter of here you can you can a small pen that you can put over a section of the garden and let a chicken or two in there for a day and let them clean up a bunch of bugs plus they're fertilizing it uh and move it around and and may even help with some of the population and you have another phone call good morning you're on the air with carol ann hey carol ann hey have you noticed a lot of uh that vine it looks like heart shaped air, air potato yes i've got a lot of it and you know i have chickens and they seem to have gotten rid of those grasshoppers that I had that eat the amaryllis. Uh huh. Now I've got that air potato coming back. Last year was there a little bit, not a lot. Right. But this year it's back, not as big as it used to be, but thicker than. And I just wonder if the chickens ate the beetle or whatever you know there was a beetle right right no the beetle is slow to come back it's um which i know i know i know that they were going to do some more releases of those beetles you're right because i haven't had too much of the beetle i've seen one leaf um on some and and you're right it is coming back but you figure that beetle only feeds on the air potato and so until the air potato it becomes enough of it it can't support a population of those beetles so i'm not sure if their hatching is just delayed um if weather conditions did anything to those i know they're still you know actually working and studying on that um as well but i have heard that you know they have been a little bit slow to uh to try to come back on you know on, on that and i know last year it seemed like they took a long time to come back i didn't have as many of the beetles um i just so long as they come back that's what i want and, and make sure that the uh air potato can't get to the size that it needs to be to start to make the the, the little bulblets you know that drop off and make part of next year's population yeah because mine it seems like it's getting almost like it was when it was really bad all yeah. of a sudden I go out there and you know like right. the friend and one way to help get rid of it is to pull at least 10 out every day. Right, and you got to really try to get out there and, and dig up when you're pulling them up is carry your little hand trowel or something like that to where you can actually dig up that um, that okay. tuber that's underneath there. Right. That's it. Well, that's the only on, the only effective way to kn to knowingly get rid of it because um, you know we're counting on this beetle and if that beetle population doesn't come back up um, we may be stuck you know still digging so I would keep it up keep up with the digging on those um, until those beetles come back. So I was amazed they go out there and there's the whole <coughs> thing again you know and, and I didn't have very many last year. Right. I just wondered if the chickens ate all the beetles, you know. Um, and they may have gotten to some of them. That is true, because they will just, they'll eat bugs. So it's oh, yeah. something that, you know, well, but I, I haven't seen a lot of them come back up, and I don't have any chickens. Well, I've got four. <coughs> <laughs> anyway. Right, right. So that's yeah. They they may have gotten to some of them, but it's just it's a it's a slow process. I mean, if there was any that they reached a maturity that they laid eggs, you just got to wait for the eggs to hatch. Okay, I just was wondering if we'd heard anything because I'd love to get rid of that air potato. Oh, what wouldn't we all? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't we all? That's it. You just got to stay on top of it. Okay. Well, thanks. I just thought I'd check and see. Right. With air potatoes. Right. <laughs> Thanks for calling. Like air potato salad. Huh? Uh, no. <laughs> they say some some people say that that's edible. I don't know. Stanley Spencer is telling you it's time to go. It's time to go. Another hour is over. Yeah. Everybody have a great day out there. Stay hydrated if you're out there gardening or whatever yes. you're doing. Yes. Carry a bottle of water with you. It it does get thirsty out there. Yes, it, it does. Thank you, Carolyn. Thanks, Larry. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. 
Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. As Democratic candidates vie for votes ahead of California's primary, Hillary Clinton just now picking up a major endorsement from Governor Jerry Brown, saying he's decided to cast his vote for her because he believes this is the only path forward to winning the presidency and stopping the dangerous candidacy of Donald Trump. Meanwhile, the GOP frontrunner holds a press conference this morning. Whenever there's a question of what is the billionaire doing with his money, there are going to be a lot of questions, and we're going to hopefully get some of those answers today. Fox's Carl Cameron outside Trump Tower in New York City. In Iraq, a fight for Fallujah raging on. Rocky troops entered the city yesterday uh, from the southern part of the city, which was largely abandoned. They've taken at least one key spot, a police station, and have used that. But they've been engaged in a, at least a four-hour battle with ISIS, who have tried to push Iraqi troops out of that area. Fox's Connor Powell. Fox News. We report. You decide. Hey, it's me, your car. No, it's not the voice of your car phone or your GPS that gives you driving directions. I'm sorry to interrupt your tunes, but we need to talk. Take a look around. I'm not the new car I used to be. The season's dirt and mud really did a number on my carpet here. And that iced coffee you spilled, hoo-hoo, that didn't help. And with the rain showers and all, I know it's going to be a real mud bath in here. So do me a favor and get a set of WeatherTech floor liners. Got it? Now, how about a wash in detail? What do you say? WeatherTech floor liners and cargo liners keep your vehicle's carpet safe from spills and messes. Made of the highest quality materials and laser measured, WeatherTech floor liners are specifically designed for your vehicle. And they're made in America. If it could talk, your vehicle would thank you. Order yours today at weathertech.com or call 1-800-CARMATS. WeatherTech. Complete protection. Completely American made. The Ad Council. Today in Florida Ag News, from the Southeast Agnet, a group of Wedgworth Leadership Institute alumni traveled to Cuba recently to gain perspective on the country's agricultural infrastructure. One of the members of the Wedgworth group was Florida Farm Bureau President John Hoblick, and he talks about what they learn when it comes to Cuban agriculture on this trip. The neat thing about the Cuba agricultural system is that it's tiered into three separate types of agricultural operations, whether you are a private grower, but the government still owns the land, you grow X amount for the distribution system of fresh produce and meats, and then there was the cooperative side and where the co-ops work together to be able to do volume, and then the uh, higher tier level is is one that is uh, strictly uh, run by the government, and the uh, farmer uh, pretty much works for the government in that realm. To hear more of Hoblick's comments about this trip to Cuba, go to our website, southeastagnet.com. When white mold is coming, you can feel it, like a bad omen. Anyone who grows peanuts knows white mold can take a farm by storm. And there's only so much you can do about it. Actually, no. Excuse me? Well, you see, now there's a latest. The fungicide with two powerful active ingredients that control white mold. I'm not buying you. If you want higher yields, you will. Because along with white mold, a latest controls several other diseases, which means healthier plants and higher yield potential. You don't say. I do. In fact, trials have shown it can produce up to 800 more pounds of peanuts per acre than competitors. <laughs> you talk like you're full of tall tales. More like scientific research. With such long-lasting control, a latest really can bring yields that reach for the sky. So when white mold is coming... We'll be fully prepared. Visit SyngentaUS.com slash latest to learn more. Always read and follow label instructions. Randall Wiseman, Southeast Agnet. Good credits, bad credits. It's none of our business because we're not an auto dealer. We're not a bank. We're not your mother. We're OcalaForSale.com. Marion County's marketplace for cars, trucks, and SUVs. We've got thousands of sellers standing by to take your call. No middleman. But hurry, don't walk, don't run. Just sit down and log on to OcalaForSale.com. License and inventory change daily. Offer does not include dealer upcharge. Undercoding rust proofing factory surcharge or delivery fee. See website for details. Hi, I'm Seth with AA Lock, Dock, and Security. Have you ever thought about the locks or security on your house or business? Have you ever wondered why the keys to your new car cost so much? Well, at AA Lock, Dock, and Security, we can help with securing your valuables. We can even replace those expensive transponder keys. We can give you the knowledge that no one else will. 